coming up later in the same arena as you saw the women's game between the U.S. and China. But for now, the United States with two wins in the tournament, beating Brazil 75-38 and Germany 77-52 in their first two matches. Iran beat Germany 69-63, then lost to Great Britain 84-60. The standings therefore put Great Britain and the U.S. on top of the group with two wins each. Brazil and Iran with one win each, and Germany and Algeria with two losses each. The first four teams from the group will go through to the quarterfinal round. The other two will compete for ninth through 12th places. The winner of Group B plays fourth place in Group A. Second place in Group B plays third place in Group A, and so on in the quarterfinal matchups. But plenty of basketball still to play for all of these teams, three games each, and almost anything can happen. Let's meet the starting lineups now for or the rosters for the two, two teams in ascending numerical order for Iran, starting with Saman Balagi. Number five is Mohammed Nezad Mohammed. Number six is Ismail Hassanpar. Number seven, the captain, Valid Golamazad. Number eight, Iman Bagazadefard. Number nine, Mohammed Sehi. Number 10, Moshin Tolue. Number 11, Haki Mansouri. Number 12, Omad Hadiazar. Number 13, Morteza Abedi. Number 14, Morteza Ibrahimi. And number 15, Hassan Abdi. And the coach for Iran is Abbas Aghak Kucheki. And the team for the United States, number two, Jake Williams. Number four, Joshua Turek. Number five, Michael Pei. Number eight, Brian Bell. Number nine, Matt Scott. Number 11, Steve Sirio. Number 12, John Gilbert. Number 13, Ian Lynch. Number 15, Nate Hines. Number 16, Trevon Jennifer. Number 20, Jared Arambula. And number 42, Aaron Googe, the head coach of the U.S. team, is Ron Lincolns. And now, as the teams line up on the court, the national anthems of both countries, starting with Sarudi Meli, the national anthem of Iran. Sarudi Meli means national anthem adopted in 1990 by the Islamic Republic of Iran. And now the United States national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner.
The anthem's completed, and the players, coaches, officials will exchange gifts at midcourt. And they also greet the referees. For the pains is the referee for this match. Saskia Warmerdam is one umpire, and Aisuko Kano is the other umpire. Problem for the players is trying to remember who it is that they are supposed to give their gift to so the exchange works properly when you've got the warm-ups on and you can't necessarily see what the player's number is. The United States of America, there's their lineup. They lead this tournament in points off the bench because, well, partly they've had two uh, rather one-sided games and they will use their bench considerably running players in. That makes it very difficult for opposing teams to cope with. Sirio and Pei are the co-captains of the team. Ron Lincolns, as we said, is the coach. And Brian Bell has been, I think, their outstanding player so far in the tournament. The leading scorer, only 14 points a game. Steve Sirio, well, he's only scoring five and a half points a game, but adding six and a half rebounds and six and a half assists. A lot goes through him. And for Iran, well, an interesting thing, five of these players play in Turkey, and one, the captain, Golomazad, plays in Spain. And Golomazad has been their outstanding players so far, along with Ibrahimi. They tend to work in the paint, the Iranians do. Lots of points inside, and actually their percentage in the paint has been almost the same as the United States. 59% of their points for the U.S. in the paint, 54 for Iran. What that means is you're getting good rebounding and you're also getting good short shots. Starting lineup, no changes for the U.S. Lynch and Gouge are the low numbers, the low pointers. Pay, Bell, and Sirio make up the rest of the starting lineup. And for Iran, Ibrahimi and... Well, Gola Manzad is not actually going to be in the starting lineup. Hadi Azar, who's the third leading scorer for them, is in the lineup. So they've got two of their three big scorers in. Those are the two bigs who will start the game for them. There are the results we already mentioned for the U.S. 2-0 and o in this tournament so far. And for Iran, they stand with one win and one loss, the win over Germany, and the loss to Great Britain. And the referee's being announced now, but they've actually split up, so you can't get one good shot of them on the sidelines. It's always nice to see the referee's faces before you start, know which one is which. That's referee, Con that's umpire Kano. U.S. trying to uh, reestablish, you might say, their dominance in wheelchair basketball. They have seven gold medals in, in the 12 Olymp Paralympics in which this has been uh, competed. But in recent years, only a couple of bronzes have been their haul in the men's tournament. And they're looking to get back on track. Ebrahimi wins the tap and, and falls over as doing it on the lean for Iran. And Iran with possession with Abdi. And now Ebrahimi. Mansouri on the baseline. He's got the shot and swishes it. 2-0 Iran. Hakeem Mansouri. Pay brings it up quickly for the U.S. Pass to Sirio. Sirio had to turn around to chase it. He's on the baseline right now, trying to spin. Bell sets a little pick for him. He's got Pay open across court, and Pay sw swishes 2-2. Two -two. Hussein Poor brings it up for Iran. 
Stops at the three-point line with Pay on him, trying to get an angle on the ball. Over to Hadiazar. Back to, back to Hossein Poor. He's off the front rim, and Sirio grabs the rebound. No red jerseys underneath the boards. Sirio comes up quickly. Stops at the three-point line. That's Guj. And Guj, as the chair is just gliding in down the paint, puts it in. It's 4-2. Mansouri now brings it up for Iran. Lynch comes out on him. Ibrahimi, the cross court pass. I don't think Hadi Azar was expecting it, but he handles it neatly. Looking for some space back to Ibrahimi, and Ibrahimi hits 4 4. Hey, the lead pass to Soria. He's got the layup. 6-4. Iran, Iran, a little confusion getting back on defense there. U.S., no pressure in the backcourt. Everybody's back and setting up. Man coverage. Oh, and Abdi's got the little space on Guj. Abdi comes in, was blocked from behind by Pei. He leaves it for Soria to chase. Soria, the pass up to Bell, so quick, exploding out of the backcourt, and Bell with the fast break basket makes it eight to four. It's the acceleration is the thing that, that separated Bell from the defenders there. Oh, great pass. Great pass inside space. Basket's good and the foul. Man, Hadi Azar. And, well, the two referees' whistles went at the same time. At, and I was looking at a three second violation. One referee signaled the foul on the shot, the other had called the three second violation and the three second violation takes the priority since that was before the shot was actually launched. Pay to Soria. Sirio, excuse me, I keep calling Soria. Pay with the reverse layup misses and the rebound it comes to Ibrahimi. Hadi Azar from the outside uses the glass and neatly banks that one in. It's eight to six. So he gets his two points back. And Sirio brings it up for the States. Gets, gets a little bit of space, leaves it for Pei, who's got a clean path to the basket. And Pei lays it in and out. Misses the layup. Pei's had an awkward shooting time so far in this tournament. His field goal percentage coming into the game was only 11%. Very uncharacteristic for him. Hassanpour over to Ibrahimi, long pass. Oh, all alone inside. Easy basket for Mansouri. Great teamwork by Iran. We're tied at eight. Four minutes gone in the game. Right now, the Iranians having no trouble at all with the man to man defense from the U.S. Sirio out to Bell. Back to Syria. Dodges the first cut over to Bell now. Bell, his shot's good. 10 to 8. Hussein Poor brings it up for Iran. In the corner to Mansouri. Mansouri, now Bell switches onto him. Hossein Poor from the foul line. Off the front rim, gets his own rebound. Manages to get it over to Abdi. And there's a stoppage as he's down. Hossein Poor. No foul, just lost his balance in the chair. Lickens. Wanted the jump ball. They got a jump ball from it. And the U.S. with this possession arrow. And the layup for Pei. You 
saw the strength of the screen that was sent there and the chair, go, the chair that went down, but no foul there. Hussein Poor, cross court to Hadi Azar. Hadi Azar. Having trouble getting the shot away, lifted himself up out of the chair. You have to be careful on that because you can't use, you can't use the foot plates to lift yourself up, raise yourself in the chair. Sirio, leaving it for Bell. Bell gathers it in, the basket's good, and the foul. Just, I mean, look at the athleticism here. Accelerates to get it, hangs on, leans the other way to absorb the shock, and puts the basket in, and he'll get the foul shot. The foul called on Hadi Azar. That's the team's first. Bell misses, doesn't complete the three-point play. It's 14-8 USA, four and a half to play in the first quarter. Fast-paced, very fast-paced basketball. Only one foul so far in the whole quarter. Hadi Azar nearly lost the ball. Oh, a good set of passes. The layup, though, missed, and Bell with the rebound. Mansouri couldn't put the layup in. Bell clears it up quickly to pay. He comes down at speed. He's got Lynch underneath coming out. Bell goes across to Sirio. Sirio. Guj has the screen from Bell. Guj's shot misses and the rebound by Mansouri. He hands it to Ibrahimi. Ibrahimi spins around. Gives it to Abdi. And they had to get the shot off quickly. And it was it was off target by Hadi Azar, but he really hardly got a look at it. Hardly got a look at the basket before releasing it because the shot clock was about to expire. Hadi Azar and Mansouri go to the bench. Sehi and Golamazad come in. So watch, that's Golamazad seven there, trying to defend Bell. And there's a foul, I think, on Sehi. That's the team's second foul. Obviously the first on Sehi, who just come in the game. Sirio for three, shot misses. Rebound, Bell nearly stole the rebound away. And there's a foul on, on Bell as he came away. And Golamazad grabbed the rebound. Excuse me, the foul on Lynch. Uh, trying to stop Hussein, Hussein Poor from coming down court, Hussein Poor picks up the ball. Gola Mazad. Well, that pass was tipped away by Sirio, and here goes Bell. It's a two-man break, and Bell is going to lay it in. This is what kills you. Defensive pressure leading to turnovers, uncontested baskets, and there's a timeout on the court by Iran with 2.54 to play in the first period. And the U.S. has just broken into an eight-point lead. They lead 16 to 8. Let's listen in.
Well, you, you can hear what the U.S. wants to do, and Iran committing the extra man up front, trying to trying to get the better picks, which leaves the opportunities for the fast breaks at the other end. Great crowds here at the Carioca Arena. One. It's been a real effort to get the locals out for this, and this, this arena has been full or nearly full for almost every session. And when Brazil plays, no worries. Well, there's a march to the basket. Two, <laughs> two players, both undefended. Abdi came in, and Golamazad underneath with nobody on him. That's one of the easier baskets you'll ever see. Bell, again, breaking down. Nobody got back in time to catch him. And Bell has yet another layup. He's got 10 points already. Ebrahimi, that pass nearly intercepted by Sirio. It goes out of bounds and Iran keep possession. 14, the reset on the shot clock. Abdi spins around, Sirio on him. That pass goes away, Guj tips it over to Sirio. There's a collision and that's gonna be a foul on Abdi. As he ran into Guj. Watch the collision there. Players are strapped tightly into the chairs. It makes the chair more maneuverable, obviously. They can maneuver it with their body, the lean of their body and the weight, but it also means when the chair gets tipped over, they go, they go with it. Surya to pay to Guj. Well, Guj, they collapse on him neatly, contest the shot, and he can't get a good shot off. And the ball comes to Golamazad for Iran. He leaves it for Hussein Poor. Guj doing a nice job defending him. Uh, and Abdi, it was a great idea on the pass, but Sehi just couldn't reach back and get it. Turnover, and Guj brings it up for the U.S., leaves it for Sirio. Pay. Sirio and Pei, really the two stars of this U.S. team for the past few years, and each has taken a, a somewhat lesser role, in, at least in terms of scoring. Sirio got the shot away just before the 24-second clock went down, and now Iran on the break, and it's Ebrahimi. So Iran basically doing to the U.S. what the U.S. had been doing to them, and Sirio comes down. Less than a minute to play in the first quarter. U.S. lead by six. Sirio into Bell. Bell spinning around and gets the drop and the foul. <laughs> well, you can understand no in any language as Bell picks himself up and goes to the charity strike. Well, let's see how much contact there actually was. It was only wheel to wheel, really. And Bell was already going backwards. So I think uh, Ibrahimi has at least part of an argument there. Bell completes the three-point play. That makes it 21-12. 49 seconds left, plenty of time. Two possessions of the shot clock. Golamazad, he's come off the bench hoping to ignite some extra offense for Iran. Doesn't have the pass there. Goes all the way cross court to Ibrahimi. And his shot goes in and out. But a great bit of rebounding by Mansouri. And there'll be a foul on Lynch, which will send Golamazad to the free throw line. And you saw Lynch. It, it was the bump with the wheels that drew the foul. U.S. players calling the play for when they get back down the court. Vahid Golamazad 
plays for Katagi in Spain. The only player, five of the Iranian team play in Turkey, and Golam Azad plays in Spain. And this is the second one as well. Sirio looks at the clock. The shot clock and the game clock are virtually the same. Gouge back to Sirio. Pay's got the open look. Pay uses the glass and banks it in. 23-12. Four seconds to go, two seconds to go. Iran's not going to be able to get a shot away. And that will bring the first quarter of this game to a close and a late burst of scoring from the U.S. Convert what had been a 16 to 12 game into a 23 to 12 game and an 11 point lead for the United States at the end of the first quarter. Take a look at the statistical line and the shooting better from the U.S. Iran missed both their free throws. Turnovers, six for Iran. Points from turnovers, four for the U.S. That makes a huge part of the difference here. But that late run by the U.S., increasing the score from 18 to 23 to 12. Five unanswered points. They lead at the end of one quarter, 23-12. Well, that's the score at the end of one quarter, 23-12 for the USA. Not, and it's a flattering score line, but they've kept the pressure on Iran. And Iran has been able to get inside, pick up points in the paint, which is their specialty. Working through, and their low pointers do very well inside. They try to run them through the middle. But right now they need more points from their big men. And one of them is and Brahimi, and he starts right in the way he needs to with the bank shot, and it's 23-14. So the U.S. now with, well, three new players on the court. Arambula is 20. Jake Williams is two on the other side, and he loses the ball to Sehi, and Sehi gives it to Ibrahimi for Iran. They go with the long pass, but there's two Americans down there, and it's cut off by the other new man on the court. That's Trevon Jennifer, number 16. Jennifer back to Bell. Bell and Gouge, who has the ball now, the two starters who stay on the court for the U.S. Cross court to Williams. Gouge back to Williams inside. Williams throws it up, gets doesn't get the bank shot to go in, but gets the foul, and he'll shoot two. Mansouri, Sehi, Golamazad, Ibrahimi, and Abdi for Iran.
Williams, who plays his club basketball in Germany for the FCK Rolling Devils. Mazad loses it to Bell. Bell spinning around, gives it to Jennifer. Back to Bell. Bell off balance and falls over. And there's another foul. And, well, you can tell by Hossein Poor's reaction what he thought of the call. But not a shooting foul. 19 on the shot clock as they inbound to Williams. Bell setting the screen for him. Now for Arambula. Arambula back to Williams. Williams loses it. It's poked away by Hossein Poor. Everybody gestures for the ball, but it was Hossein Poor who knocked it out of bounds. The U.S. will inbound with only nine on the shot clock. Williams. Bell sets the pick for him. A hard pick. Up top. Arambula's shot misses. Rebound taken by Golomazad. And Iran trying to come up quickly. Mansouri. Over to Ebrahami. Ebrahami from the outside three. It went in and out. And Bell with the rebound. And Bell down for Williams. Williams at pace. And the layup. Again, catching Iran up court. And you heard, you heard what Coach uh, Le Leakins was saying about Iran with their, what in, a, in effect can, you can call the blockers here. There's a good pass to Gola Mazad, and he puts the basket in underneath. But the blockers are all underneath. There's nobody back to defend because they use them so well in the paint. They get points out of them. They get great screens out of them. But it leaves them open to the counterattack. And Arambula, he goes flying and loses the ball, and the possession goes over to Iran. You saw he was of two minds, basically, whether to pass or to continue on the dribble. Right there, he lost his balance. No foul. Bell, nice bit of defense, nice bit of defense there on Gola Mazad. Now Arambula tips it away from him. There'll be 12 seconds left on the shot clock for Iran. Sehi will inbound for the Iranians. You saw how quickly Gola Mazad got himself back up. And now Hussein Poor, and he hits. Twenty-seven, eighteen. Iran thus far outscoring the U.S. in this period. Six-four, getting back into the ball game. Guj, he loses it but recovers. High pass ahead. Oh, Jennifer did a great job of leaving that for Arambula, and Arambula just dead balled it off the glass. Six and a half minutes to go. Twenty-nine, eighteen. And now full court pressure from the U.S. One on one. Golamazad gets past Flowers. Great spin move. But Bell comes back so quickly to cut him off. He really deserved something from that move. But that's just how much acceleration, how much instant burst Bell has. And Bell stays on him. And Golamazad having to drop back as he shoots shot the fadeaway got that one off before the buzzer but not a great shot and now Williams comes up from the US had a Rambula cutting behind him but saw him late Williams getting inside now and there is a foul called on Sehi so there's Williams you saw just getting the, the little bump and getting the chair going again and there's a timeout on the court with the score, the USA 29, the 
Iranian uh, People's Republic, the Islamic Republic of Iran, excuse me, 18. And the timeout was called by Iran with 5.50 to play in the half. Lovely to see little children in the crowd getting their bas first, first basketball attention, perhaps firsthand. It's a real family atmosphere here in this arena. The area for baby strollers in the in the mezzanine is just incredible. It's 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 office sized. Plenty of plenty of room, plenty of spaces for the kids. Bring them on down. 5.50 to play, U.S. 29, the Islamic Republic of Iran, 18. Williams at the foul line to shoot two. Makes them both, it's 30 to 18. Coach Lickens. U.S. now back to full court pressure. Ibrahimi. There's a real log jam there. He's trying to get up the sideline and can't. Leaves the ball and it's stolen by Williams. Just before the eight seconds would have expired to get it over half court. Bell. His shot's good. 33-18. This time they clear it out, but it, it's stolen. It's stolen twice, actually. Stolen the first time and then knocked away the second time by Jennifer. 13 seconds will be left on the shot clock for Iran when they inbound the ball. You heard him say, play wide. The crowd's doing a wave. That's what they're yelling about. Nothing that's actually happening on the court. Ebrahimi, a good pass. Hook shot missed by Mansouri. And again, Bell is the one who's coming away. Williams now chasing after him. Bell gets the ball to Williams. Williams goes crashing. And the foul is called on Sehi. Watch this sequence here as Bell lean on the lean. Gets the pass to Williams. Williams can't get past Sehi. And Sehi has the foul called on him. That is the team's fourth foul. The next one will put them, they're in the penalty situation with the next foul. Williams for three, and he hits. 36-18, they doubled the score. Under five minutes to play now in the second quarter. And the foul is going to be on Bell. Stopping that long pass up court to Gola Mazan. That's the team first foul. First foul on Bell as well. Bell, uh, Jennifer, oh, that's a good pass. And Hussein Poor just couldn't get the shot to drop as Williams comes down now quickly, leaves it for Bell. Bell. Just amazing how he got that ball free and then got the shot up as he was moving underneath the basket, 38-18. All of a sudden, the U.S. has broken this game open. Iran had a 6-4 advantage, so in the points scored in this quarter, you may remember I mentioned that, well, the U.S. has scored 11 unanswered points since that time. Golamazad trying to break free, and we have a foul. on Jennifer. Mansouri. Sehi. Trying to go with the long pass underneath, but Bell knocks that one away. And it is then 
knocked out of bounds by a by Mansouri. And now Iran putting some pressure on the U.S. Bell, they break it quickly. Arambula penetrates. He's got Williams on the base. Williams' shot is short, but Bell's got the rebound. He puts it right back in. It's 40 to 18. Remember, this game was 18 to 12, and since then it has been a 22 to 6 run. Make that 24 to 6 run by the U.S. since the late part of the first quarter. And the pressure right now is is really telling on Iran. Bell with another steal. Still full court pressure from the U.S. That one's picked off by Arambula. Arambula up to Williams. Williams to Googe, the trailer. Back to Williams. Eight footer is off. Rebound by Jennifer. Out to Bell. Over to Williams. Williams for three, short, shot clock go, expires, shot didn't hit the rim, doesn't reset the shot clock. Two and a half minutes to play in the half. After the 24 second violation, it ran Inbound, more full court pressure. Broken easily. Now can they set up on offense? And they do with Ibrahimi, trying to get away from Williams. Ibrahimi, pass goes in the middle, but there's two white jerseys there. Googe heaves it down court for Williams. Williams can't control it, chases it down, keeps it in play to Bell. Bell turns around and gives it back to Williams. Googe now just inside the three point area to Arambula. 10 on the shot clock. Googe at the foul line, dribbles in. Arambula's got the shot. Hits the back of the rim. And rebounded by Abedi, who's just come in the game. And Abedi now setting a little screen for Hadi Azar, who's back in the game. He loses it to Arambula. Up to Bell, over to Jennifer. Jennifer misses the layup and the rebound to Ibrahimi. Ibrahimi up to Abedi. Abedi. Arambula cuts him off. Now Bell picks him up. Do a great job of switching. Hadi Azar looks for the shot, but Arambula was there. Hussein Poor, Bell is on him. The high pass is taken neatly, and the basket is good by Hadi Azar. 42-20 now, Williams brings it up for the U.S. Under a minute to play. Jennifer, Bell, and back to Williams. And a whistle for a three-second violation against the U.S. Turn over the ball to Iran. Betty, and he puts it in. They do a nice job of getting the ball inside. The problem was when they weren't making the shots, they were getting caught inside, and the U.S. was getting easy buckets at the other end. 42-22 with 29 seconds remaining, and Arambula dribbling his way around down the lane, kicks it back out 
to Jennifer. Jennifer moves behind the screen. Arambula back to Jennifer. And he hits a lot of time to line that one up. 44, 22. Abedi, back to Hadi Azar. Hadi Azar. Trying to get free from Bell and does. And there's the buzzer to end the half before the shot could be got off. And well, another very good half for the US. And you see how they did it. Going deep with the bench. Starting unit ran up a 23-12 lead in the first quarter. And then a second unit with three new players applying full court pressure extended that lead with a great run where they outscored Iran 20 to 4. Iran got some points back late in the quarter, but you see the domination reflected in turnovers and points from turnovers 14 for Iran, 12 points from turnovers for the U.S. Nine steals to one. And, well, the U.S. has taken six foul shots and made five of them. The shooting, a little bit better for the U.S., but the Iranians are shooting well when they get a good shot away. But what it means at halftime is the U.S. has built up a considerable lead, doubling the Iranian score. And the score at the half is the United States 44, Iran 22.
Welcome back for the second half men's wheelchair basketball preliminary round group B USA 44 IRI 22 and it was a game that started fairly close the score at 18 12 the US then had a 20 to 4 run in the game to open it up and it now stands at 44 22 and a different group coming out on court U.S. starting team played basically the first quarter. In the second quarter, three new players came on and they, they ran a full court press for most of the second quarter, which helped them get an awful lot of easy, easy buckets, uncontested fast break points. Also took advantage of the Iranians bringing their low pointers in close, which they're very effective at doing and get points out of. And there you see coming into the game for the first time is Josh Turek. Turek is actually the second leading scorer for the U.S. in the first two games. Ian Lynch, who start Ian Lynch, excuse me, he's one of two people in the world that I know of who's pronounced the name Ian, the other being Ian Eagle, a sports announcer in the United States. And Turek, as I said, second leading scorer in the first two games for the U.S., makes his first appearance on court. Sirio is back in the game. Scott is in for the first time. Scott having fun <laughs> with uh, Betty. <laughs> and, and when you think that in 2008, these two teams did not play in the Olympics, it, it's just great to see out there competing on the court and having fun doing it. Matt Scott now, his first attempt from the free throw line. Makes a second. And again, full court pressure from this unit that the U.S. has out on the court. And Turek getting there and cutting off. And there's a foul for blocking. I believe it is on Mohammed. You see Turek and Jennifer there just keeping the player Ibrahimi back into the backcourt. He's late arriving as a result. Turek up top to Scott. Scott for three points. That shot misses, but Turek gets the rebound into Scott, who's in the lane now. And Scott throws it up backwards, trying to draw the foul, which converted to a shooting foul and the foul is on Golem Azad. As I, I said at the top of the game, the U.S. leads this tournament in points off the bench. And partly because they've been winning by big margins, and partly because they do use two units, basically, playing almost different styles when they do. Great job by Hadi Azar to get in on the foul line. Really had to fight his way in there. And now they double team. And Hadi Azar. That's a great finish. He got a good pass from Golem Azad, who was double teamed and got the ball to him in the paint. And Hadi Azar again had to fight to get position and put the bucket in. Williams misses, rebound tip. Williams gets it again and no shot as they have to pick up Hadi Azar and his chair, but not pick up, he has to get up, I should say. No problem getting himself up. 13 on the shot clock for the U.S. You hear the fans counting down the shot clock for them. Sirio can't get it to Lynch. 
And again, full court pressure by the U.S. Broken easily by Iran. Golamazad waiting for teammates to come up in support. Over to Hadi Azar. Hadi Azar. Flowers knocking the ball loose. Whistle as the chair is down. Watch Flowers here. Going up and losing the balance backwards. U.S. inbounds. Hadi Azar. They need a new wheel. Someone needs a new wheel. Bogzadafard. And the wheels for Gola Mazad. Scott. Sirio. Back to Scott. Back to Sirio. Cross court to Turek. Turek with the shot. In and out. Rebound to Golda Mazad. Hussein Poor. Trying to get past Turek turns. Bagzad Afad. Ibrahim. Hussein Poor. Shot misses Turek with the rebound. Oh, look at that lead pass. And Sirio puts in the layup. But what a great pass. Three quarters of the court, cross court. Oh, you could see. Ibrahim, uh, sorry, uh, Golamazad trying to get past Scott. Now he's got Scott one on one, and oh, what a lean. He got a great lean to get that shot away, knocked himself over, and the U.S. comes down with Turek going behind the back and then laying it in. And it's a timeout taken by Iran with 6.33 to play in the third period. The U.S. 49, Iran 24. That's the truest thing you've seen, and it's been true all through this tournament. Starts with defense, and the teams that have played the more aggressive pressing defenses that are able to, it, it involves a lot because it involves having uh, players who can move and react quickly. It involves sometimes having depth because you're obviously asking more of your players to go up and down the court with full court defense. And the teams that have been able to do that, apply pressure, have consistently been the more successful teams. There is an element of a self-defining prophecy there, or a self-fulfilling prophecy, I should say. Cause and effect, but, and there's the basket and the foul. Bogzadafard with the basket. Good work underneath to get the second shot. And there's the foul. Completes a three-point play, 49-27. It's 
Scott bringing it up quickly. It's knocked away from him, but kept alive by Sirio. And the stoppage as Scott went down in his chair. And that's the fourth foul on Gola Mazad. He's going to have to come out, and Ibrahimi comes back in for him. Sirio across to Turek. Scott setting the screen for him. Scott tells him to go, and he drops the pass. Uh, sorry, Turek told Scott to go and drop the pass to him, and Scott puts it in. You can just see that little nod of the head. Scott on Ibrahimi. Pass up, it deflects off Abedi, kept in neatly by Jennifer. Pass ahead to Scott, and Scott lays it in. Made it look easy. We'll give the credit to Jennifer, and there's how you heard, you heard the coach saying, stack them up there, and that's what they're doing, making it hard to bring the ball up. Get it across court quite easily that time to Ebrahami, but now you gotta wait for people to cross and come across and set up your offense, and the shot clock is already down to 10, and they still haven't got advanced the ball in the half court. Now they have, and there's the shot. Hussein Poor misses, Sirio with the rebound. Ahead for Scott, coming down two on three. Scott goes across to the trailer, who is Turek three on three, and Turek lays it in. 55-27. Nice pass all the way up court. Hussein Poor brings it over. Scott knocks that pass away. Scott leaves it for Jennifer. He controls it. Back over to Scott. Poked away from him by Hussein Poor, but Scott gets it back. 15 on the shot clock for the U.S. Cross court to Sirio. Back to Scott. Scott with the long three. A downtown. That one is from the Copacabana. 58-27. A Copacabana three for Matt Scott. Inbounds pass and Jennifer knocked it back. Gilbert now coming in for the U.S., replacing Lynch. Hussein Poor over to Abedi. There's the play. Oh, he had the cutter and didn't get him. He takes the shot himself off the front rim. Scott with the rebound, and there is a foul in the backcourt. Turek catches up to the ball. The foul was on Ebrahimi. That was his second, but it was the team's fifth. So they're in the penalty situation, and Scott will shoot two. Scott, who plays in Italy, in Porto Torres. Three of the American team play in Italy. Brian Bell plays in Cantu for Bianta 85, and Jared Arambula for Handicap Sport in Varese. Scott missed both free throws. Turek with the rebound, but it was knocked away from him. Gilbert inbounds. Turek. Cross court to Sirio. Sirio's shot is off. Rebound by Gilbert. Puts it back out to Scott. Back to Turek. And Turek hits. 60 to 27. quick to stop that one. 
Hussein Poor had got himself righted. And coming in to Luai and uh, Hadi Azar are coming back in and Brahami goes out. The pace of the game is very tough and said the, the Iranians had played nine early on and they've needed to do that here trying to keep keep the pace match the pace of this u.s team and that's the 24 second violation iran unable to get the shot off in 24 seconds three minutes to play in the third period Bugs Adafard is trapped in the backcourt. Sirio comes up quickly. Turek with position in the paint. Puts the shot in at 62-27. Hadi Azar. He's out of the chair. Man, and I think he's asking a legitimate question as he was bumped. Not just a collision, but a bump. Turnovers, well, 19 to five. Story of the game. Gilbert to Turek. Scott. Scott behind the back. Gilbert. And Gilbert hits. Oh, that was poked away. Jennifer, can he catch it? Keeps it in. He goes out. And the shot clock, well, they applaud the effort there. The crowd does. The shot clock went off. Iran didn't get a shot off in 24 seconds. And the U.S. will inbound. Sirio, Scott, Scott for three, and hits another one, 67-27. And Matt Scott's got his three-point, brought his three-point shoes with him today. Same poor. Hadi Azar loses it. To, well, doesn't lose it. He can't get it as Scott takes it away on uh, the loose ball, and Scott lays it in. There's Jennifer, I think, who knocked the ball away at the beginning. And Scott now has 13. It's 69 27. Three pointer misses, rebound, and knocked away again by Scott, but Iran will keep possession with 36 seconds remaining in the quarter and nine on the shot clock. Sahi back in the game and he gets the inbounds pass. Nine on the shot clock, down to seven now. Tolui, Tolui, and the shot clock expires before Bugs Adafard can get a shot away. Sirio basically looking for a last shot, watching the, the shot clock. Back to Scott. Scott for three. 
misses that time. Goes out of bounds with six and a half seconds left in the quarter. And so Iran gets a chance for the last shot of the quarter. Pass stolen by Sirio. Scott and just beats the buzzer with that layup. It's two and the score at the end of three. And well, I don't, is that his shoe? I talked about his shooting shoes. One of them just fell off, but the shot went in anyway and beat the buzzer. And the score at the end of three periods is 71 to the U.S., 27 to Iran. And well, let's first thing you turn to, turnovers, 23 for Iran, five for the US, points off turnovers, four for Iran, 28 points off of turnovers for the United States. That's a phenomenal thing, 14 to one in steals, rebounding, and nothing else, everything else could be even e equal, but with that kind of advantage, you're bound to have a big league and a big lead the US has. 71-27 at the end of three quarters. Fourth quarter underway, U.S. lead 71-27, Iran starting things off. Hadi Azar, long shot, misses. Great bit of rebounding there by Tului and puts it in. That one hit, the shot had only hit the net, but Tului kept it in and drew the foul on Hines, who has just come into the game for the fourth quarter. Misses the foul shot. Hines with the ball. Up to Pay. Pay turns around. Leaves it for Sirio. Gouge is back in the game as well. There's Gouge. Hines setting the screen for him, and Gouge hits the shot. Nice form with that left hand. Long shot by Hadi Azar. Hits the front of the rim, and here comes Pay for the U.S. Hines slowing it down. Now... Oh, missed that shot. A good position down low on the baseline. And a chance for a break from Iran. But look at how quickly the U.S. get back. Hadi Azar. Oh, good work by him. And nicely done. He's made some baskets by fighting his way through. Maneuvering the chair. And he does well with it. Puts the layup in. And it's 73-31. Turek looking for Sirio, gives it to Hines underneath. Hines has it knocked away from him. It's kept in play by Bagdaz by Bagzadafard. And it's Bagzadafard who gets it back. Sahai. 
coasted in closer and closer, got the shot and hit it. Bogzari Afar with the assist. 73-33. Sirio using the glass for the, the bank. 75-33. Bogzadafar again working really hard with the chair, using the chair. Open shot. Can't go for Balagi. Gilbert coming down on the outside. Pay gets the pick from Gilbert. Moves behind the screen and goes cross court. Sirio takes it over his shoulder. Hines set the screen. There we are. Open shot. And good for Gilbert. That's Gilbert has four now. Uh, you can see a little misfire on the shot by Bogzadafard. <laughs> Notice the whole name isn't on the back of his jersey. <laughs> so, and Pei, well, Saria and Pei have been doing this together for years. They play on the same team in Germany, R.S. Bau Lan Deal, as a number of the German players. And it was an old home week when they met Germany in the competition in their second match. The timeout was taken by Iran, 79-33 with 6.24 to play. Sounds like he wants to get up to 100 in this game. <laughs> the mom was teaching the little girl awareness of where the camera is, regardless of where the screen is. So 6.24 to play. U.S. leads by 46. Iran inbound the ball. There's the leading scorers, Bell, 19, Scott, 15, Hadi Azar, 12, the leader for Iran. The long three by Ebrahimi went out with four fouls. Now, no point in keeping him or worrying about the fifth foul now with six minutes to play. Pay back to Sirio. Sirio off the rim, rebounded by Tolu Toluai. Toluai poked away from him by Sirio, picked up by Ibrahimi. Ibrahimi, and it's good. And the foul. Makes the foul shot as well. Completes the three-point play at 79-36. Pay brings it up for the U.S. Sirio. Hines setting a pick for him. Sirio drives in. And there's a foul on the outside by Ibrahami. That should be his fifth. No, excuse me, that's his third. Arambula comes back in for the U.S. 
for Googe. Williams for Syria. Pay to Williams. Williams back to Pay. Shot off the front rim. He just hasn't had his shooting eye so far in this tournament. Ibrahimi for Iran. Oh, good pass. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. And Balagi with the finish, cutting down the lane. Arambula, Hines, Williams, little log jam there. Arambula on the drive, leans forward, finger roll, puts it in. <laughs> he likes that shot. I think he's pleased with himself. And he drew the foul as well. And the foul on Mohammed Nizar. There's the two leading scorers for the U.S. team, Bell and Scott. Ibrahimi off the glass and the front rim. Arambula looks for the pass then send, now sends it to Pay. Pay for Hines. Hines off the glass and good, 84-38. Just under four minutes to play. Ibrahimi off, rebound to a line, nice pass, nice pass again. And a three second violation call. Well, I, I have to disagree with that one because when the shot was put up and hit the rim, the three second call should have started again. And it did not. There's a timeout on the floor to think about that one with three and a half minutes to play in the game in the US 84. Iran, 38. And you see Arambula calling for the three, the three second violation. Williams to pay, back to Williams. Inside to Hines, Hines misses. Arambula knocks the rebound away, but it is picked up by Balagi. He brings it up. Oh, this is a good pass. And it's in by Abedi. The pass from Golamazad, 84-40. And here in the fourth quarter, the teams are even with 13 points each. Hines working his way in, misses, gets his own rebound, but loses it out of bounds. Gets, gets a little rub of the hair. There you see him tumbling over. And I bet he gave him a little friendly pat. 239.
Oh, good pass inside, but great reactions by Arambula to break that one up. But another good pass. Shot misses Arambula, hit it, and it was knocked out of his hands. Well, I guess. Arambula went, seemed to go off of him. I bet he seemed to think so as well. 2.20 to, to play. Hines inside. Such a big target inside, but that one was knocked away from him by Golden Mazad. Nine on the shot clock. Arambula over to Hines. Hines puts it up quickly and in with just three on the shot clock. 86-40 now, under two minutes to play in the game. Oh, beauty. Ibrahimi started the game with a shot much like that. Hasn't been able to get many of them off, but sinks that one, 86-42. Pay cross court to Williams. Williams has it knocked away from him by Balagi. 11 on the shot clock for the U.S. remaining. Williams from three points and hits it, 89-42. Well, pushing foul called on uh, Mohammed Nazad. Turek passed up the shot for Williams. Back to Turek at the foul line. And he hits it. 91-42. One minute to play. Gilbert tried for the interception. Couldn't get it. Golamazad, pass in to Abedi. Abedi sinks the bucket, 91-44. Arambula, across to Williams. Williams with a little move. Starts to dribble again. And it's knocked away from him by Balagi. Balagi, sharp defensive player. Didn't come in until the second half, but He's got quick hands. Rambula off the glass, 93-44. And with the shot clock, just a second ahead of the game clock. You know, that's going to that's bring it to a close. Ebrahami says, no, we're not going to do it. He hands the ball to Gilbert, and Gilbert will hang on to it as the clock expires. Gives it to the officials, and uh, that brings the game to a close with a, a little gesture of sportsmanship. And uh, the USA has defeated Iran 93-44 in a game they broke open with defensive pressure in the second quarter after taking a lead in the late minutes of the first quarter, extending a lead and then putting the pressure on in the second. The teams congratulating each other after the match. Coach Lickens. It's great stuff to see. And Coach Lickens with really kind words for Ibrahami. And you can see what that means. 
When the coach of a team has just beaten you stops and tells you what a good game you've played and what a good player you are, you can see what that means to the players. Now the American fans and everybody applauding right here, applauding both teams as well they should. And the crowd full of neutrals, full of Brazilians who come out here. They know what they've seen, which is an exhibition of great basketball and great effort by both teams. A team that continued, Iran, a team that continued to play hard and play well, even when the score had mounted up against them. And that's really what the crowd has appreciated here tonight. Leading scorers were Ebrahami with 11. Hadi Azar, who tried really hard and, and has some really good moves as well, he wound up with eight. Scott and Bell, the leading scorers for the U.S. And as I've said so many times during the game, the story of this game is in those last two entries. Turnovers 24 from Iran, seven for the U.S. Points from turnovers 28 from the U.S. And there's the score by quarters. The big burst in the second quarter continued in the third, 27-5, complete domination in that third quarter, and then Iran just fighting back in the fourth. And that leaves the standings now. The U.S. undefeated after three games. Great Britain has won both of theirs. Iran one and two, or Brazil one and one. Germany and Algeria have yet to win. Four of the six teams will go through to the quarterfinals and play four teams from Group A. So that's the score. At the end of this game, the U.S. 93, Iran 44. Let's take a look and see exactly how this game looked. Well, it was a lot of fun for everybody. Less fun for Iran, but a good experience for them as they move their way up into the, inter the world of international competition here at the Paralympics. But the final score, the United States of America keep their unbeaten record alive. 93, Iran 44 here at the Carioca Arena. A big win for the U.S.
And welcome to Carioca Arena 1 in Rio de Janeiro and the Rio 2016 Paralympic Games Women's Wheelchair Basketball Group B preliminary round matchup between the United States of America and the People's Republic of China. You can see the standings as they are in Group B. The Netherlands and China have played two, one, two each. The U.S. has played one and won it. France has lost three games. Algeria has lost its two games. So this is a very, very interesting matchup to see how these teams will shake out in the final seedings of the five-team group. Four will go through to the quarterfinals. The top team in this group plays the fourth-place team in Group A. Second place plays third and etc. The bottom two teams in the groups will play for ninth and tenth places in the Paralympic Games. So let's meet the two teams now. They are being introduced on the court in ascending numerical order. And for China, that starts with number four, Tanjiao Li. Number five is Zhu Qing Chen. Number six, Zhao Yao Wang. Number seven, Guidi Liu. Number eight, the captain, Yong Long. Number nine, Hai Zhen Cheng. Number 10, Sui Ling Lin. Number 11, Jaime Dai. Number 12, Mingzhu Deng. Number 13, Yan Hua Li. Number 14, Si Ting Huang. And number 15, Dai Mei Chen. And the coach of the Chinese team, Yuan Sheng Zhu. And the team for the U.S. now, number two is Gail Gang. Number four, Megan Blunk. Number five, Darlene Hunter. Number eight, Natalie Schneider. Number nine, Desi Miller. Number 10, Jennifer Poist. Number 11, Vanessa Erskine. Number 12, Becca Murray. Number 15, Rose Hollerman. Number 23, Abby Duncan. Number 24, Christina Schwab. Number 33, Mackenzie Soldan. And the head coach, the appropriately named Stephanie Wheeler. And you can hear the PA announcer always slightly behind on the names here at the Carioca Arena. And now with the teams all lined up and introduced. It will be time for the national <laughs> anthems of the two countries, starting with the Chinese anthem, the March of the Volunteers. Adopted in 1949 and then restored as the national anthem in 1982. And now, the National Anthem of the United States, the Star Spangled Banner. Ladies and gentlemen, the Anthem of the United States of America, Senores e Senores, Estados Unidos da América.
And now the teams will meet up at center court and exchange gifts. Remembrances of this match. This is the easy way to do it. They go across and give it to their opposite number, the coaches, the assistant coaches. Uh, sometimes you see the teams go by in line as they would after the game and, and congrat to congratulate each other. It makes it hard for them sometimes to figure out which player is supposed to get their gift. And then they file past to meet and greet the officials for today's match. Mari Quintana is the referee. Benjamin Wood and Maurizio Zamponi are the two umpires. We, net, we don't seem to get a headshot of them before the match to identify them. And you, you see they're the assistant coach for China, Zidane Wang, who you may remember if you've watched Chinese men's basketball in the Olympics where he represented China. So last second shots. There's the U.S. team. The big guns for them, the two women to watch, Becca Murray and Rose Hollerman, have been the leaders of Hollerman. 29 points and 9 rebounds. Murray's 36 points and 7 rebounds. Christina Schwab is the player. She's the captain and the player through whom everything works, averaging 14 assists. Well, averaging is the wrong word because they've only played one match against France, but that's what they got in that match. You saw... Coach Wheeler. Abby Duncan, of course, another great name for a basketball player. And if we look at uh, the lineup for China, well, we've seen we've seen them. Uh, now they've played two matches, and Louis and Dai have been their two big scorers. Dai, the youngster, only 21 years old. Louis, only 23 years old. They're building young talent there in China. And those two, Dai has averaged seven rebounds and four assists a game as well. Long, the captain, again, as with Schwab, tends to be the player who acts as the point guard. And she's been averaging 6.5 assists per game. Deng, who helps out underneath with 3.45 rebounds, also with six assists per game. Starting lineup for the U.S. Gang, Hunter, Miller, Murray, and Hollerman. Hunter is the low pointer. Your starting lineup has to have 14 points or less in it. China, Chen, Lui, Long, Ling, and Dai. Just the players that we mentioned there. 14 points or less. The players are graded on a scale from one point to 4.5. The higher the number, the lower the degree of impairment for the player. So one, the lowest number, is the highest degree of impairment. And for example, Darlene Hunter is a one for the United States. When you put your four players on, the total cannot go over 14. Your five players, I should say, on the total cannot go over five, 14 points. China wins over Algeria quite easily and France by 20 points and the U.S. has played one match which was also against France and they won that one by 56 points opening tap now it will be Desi Miller taking it against Dai, and Dai wins the tap for China. Lin with the ball up top as the players set up. And you see Hall Hollerman right away on Dai. Hollerman only 20 years old, so two of the young talents who we'll probably see for years to come here. And the open shot, good screen, and Liu, and Liu cans that one. It's 2-0 to China. They are picking up around the three-point line. Miller bringing it up for the U.S. And from the outside, Becca Murray hits. And Schwab, Miller replaced Schwab, it seems, in the starting lineup there. Different combination for the U.S. That's Hunter on long. View again. This time she misses, and Murray brings in the rebound. Oh, 
Hollerman is on the outside, and she hits. It's 4-2 to the U.S. Hollerman, very versatile, big. She's, she works underneath, but she's got incredibly quick acceleration. She can get down court quickly, has the outside shot. Very talented 20-year-old. And this is Dai, the 21-year-old for China. She shoots from the outside. Hers goes in and out, and Murray with the rebound for the U.S. Desi Miller puts the ball in her lap and brings it up slowly. You have to dribble for each two pushes on the wheels, or you can dribble as much as you like. Murray from the outside, and she hits 6-2. to two. And we've got a traveling violation on Long. The extra, the extra push of the wheel when she turned, which constitutes a push, resulted in the traveling call. Murray reversing direction. There's the pass to Miller inside the foul line, and Miller cans it. It's 8-2. to two. She, she looks pretty laid back, doesn't she? And got a timeout call by China with 7.24 to play in this first period, and the U.S. leading 8-2. to two. And that, there's one. Now, the figures, that, that's nice. That's a lot easier to follow than when they're drawing those lines. But he's, he's explaining how they have to get back defensively and how they have to defend against those medium range shots. Just as I said, Desi Miller looked pretty. Well, look at look at him with the Olymp the Paralympic mascot there. Desi Desi Miller looked incredibly relaxed down there, and you saw her signaling because she couldn't get down back down court. She was being blocked for someone else to pick up her responsibility. And right away, Coach Wheeler telling them that they need to get back more quickly, show more intensity. And there you see them grouped up, almost like handball, grouped up around that three-point circle. And now things then, nothing like handball as the defense spreads out. Man-to-man -man defense from the U.S. Die moves across the middle, stops and puts up her shot. It doesn't go, and the rebound comes to Desi Miller. Miller to Hollerman. Hollerman back to Miller's got the open shot and she hits it. <laughs> Again, blocked in and lets the teammates know. View for China into Die, Die, and she hits. Having to go backwards with that, put a little bit of extra on it, it's 10 to 4. Up quickly to Miller. Moves behind the screen. That one goes in and out. The screen was set by Hunter. And trying to come down quickly now with Chen. Chen gives it off to Long. She moves behind Dai's screen. Two-handed shot goes around the rim and comes out Hollerman with the rebound for the U.S. And she comes down now herself. Murray. Gang. Gang shot misses. Rebound loose and corralled finally by Louis. You. Long. Long still, takes the baseline, comes underneath, reverse layup, 
doesn't go. Rebound by Hollerman, looking for a quick pass to Miller. Couldn't get that one away and brings it out herself. Coming down at speed, going into the hoop and gets the layup. End to end stuff from Rose Hollerman. 12 to four, halfway through the first period. Die, she's got on the baseline, and she hits. Miller, bringing it in herself and takes the shot, and she hits. So Chinese, uh, it seems like they're picking, they're retreating a little bit too far. They're picking up, they're giving Miller lots of room up top, and she's just coming in. She's got six points now. Hasn't missed a shot. And a traveling violation on Lin. Again, Lin, and I think it was the same thing. The extra turn on the chair without the dribble. Another turnover for China. And Soldan comes into the game. For the U.S. replacing Hunter. Murray, shots long, die with the rebound. Die bringing it up herself. They set the pick for her. Good pass inside, but Murray alert and cut that one off. Die had Chen cutting down the lane, but Murray got the hand out and deflected the pass away. Cheng and Deng are both in. That's Cheng with the ball now. And Murray harassing her. The shot goes in and out. Hollerman with the rebound and gives it to Miller. Miller back to Hollerman. Hollerman steering her way into at the front court. Hollerman again, end to end. This time the shot misses. All the red jerseys are there. Cheng gives it up. Dai. Chang setting the screen for her. Die with time. Misses Hollerman with another rebound. And Miller. And that one's picked off, but it goes out of bounds by Chen. And Chen was looking for that quick turn down court. But the ball just beat her to the halfway line. 11 on the shot clock for the U.S. Miller now behind Hollerman's screen, and Miller lets the long shot go from the outside, climbs to the top of the backboard, but the rebound is there. There's a foul. Basket isn't good, but Murray had position and got the rebound. Good job. See, you have to move the ball. You're shooting from down low. You have to move the ball to keep your shot. Rebecca Murray makes the first. Two teams average virtually the same age, 26.7 and 26.8. Murray misses the second. It's tipped away and out of bounds, and the U.S. will keep possession. Miller, Chen whirls around, stay on Miller. Holloman is outside, now wants to, you hear the crowd counting down the shot clock. Miller from the foul line and puts it in easily. So little wasted effort on her part. Makes it look easy, 17 to six now with two and a half minutes to go in the first period and Dai brings it up for the Chinese. 
That's a little bit outside the range. She's like, that was a nice entry pass. Chang now has an open shot with a good screen, but misses, and Hollerman pulls it in yet again. And Hollerman again brings it up herself, coming hard on the outside, turns the corner. She's cut off there by Chen, a good D. And there's a foul. It's not a foul if you collide with your own teammate, but they haven't had an indication. Didn't see an indication of who the foul was on. Oh. Marie comes around. Hollerman now from the outside. Her shot misses. Dies all alone underneath for the rebound. Didn't have an indication of what that call was. And it was simply to reset the chair, no foul. Just a stoppage of the clock to pick, to pick up the chair. Miller turns. Murray up the top of the key. Hollerman, she's got the screen from Soldan. She goes down on the baseline, shot won't drop. And the rebound by Louis. And we've got a foul on Holleran in the backcourt. No, on Miller, excuse me. First team foul, both teams, or each team has one. Just a minute 13 to go, only one foul per team. It's been a very fast paced first quarter. The long shot misses. Miller pulls down the rebound, and she brings it down, telling Holleran to come down on the left side with her. She's looking that way, but she puts the shot up herself and hits it. Nineteen to six, and Desi Miller has ten of the nineteen. Desi short for Desiree. Die, short for die. In and out for her. Rebound taken away by Cheng. Back to die. Die again with the shot. And this time makes it. Ja Ming die. Put it into Murray's hands for what might be the last shot. She gives it to Gang and Gang is fouled. So with 2.6 on the clock, Gail Gang goes to shoot the first foul shots. Of the game. That's very unusual. At the end of the first quarter, Gang makes the first. And the second. 21 to 8 now. And China looking for a way to get the ball quickly across half court. There's the second pass. And, hit, and the shot, Dai could not get the shot off, couldn't get into a position to shoot. So the first quarter comes to an end. Uh, and a good quarter for the U.S. as they lead 21 to 8 over China. And I think the difference you'll see in this first quarter has primarily been shooting. Where the U.S. likes to do the pressure game and get turnovers, there's only been two for China, only two points for the U.S., but they're shooting over 50% for this game so far nine out of 16 china four out of 15 and it hasn't been that they're getting shots close to the basket but they're getting nice open looks at the basket and doing very well with that
As you see there, open looks for Holland, mid-range mid -range shots. And the U.S. has been sinking them with regularity. In fact, Desi Miller, five for seven from the floor. Murray, two for three. Hollerman, two for five. So the score at the end of the first quarter, 21 to eight. Haven't had any report on Schwab for the US. I'm trying to see what, what the story is and why she isn't playing. And the US will inbound to begin the second quarter. Rebecca Murray puts it into play. Desi Murray, Desi Miller at the top of the key. They pick her up a bit earlier now, but the pass into Gang and Gang. Nice look from Murray and the finish by Gang. It's 23 to eight. Long into Dai and Dai hits again. So the Chinese, uh, well for them, the offense has really been Dai. She has eight of the 10 points. She shot four for eight, 50% from the floor. Miller to Hollerman. Hollerman's got the screen. Soldan setting it. She moves back behind Soldan again. Across court to Murray. Murray, oh, she was looking for Gang. Now she shoots herself and misses. It comes loose and Dai picks it up. And there's a little bit of a break for China but everyone, all the white jerseys are back and Long turns around. Die. Swings to the outside. Holloman is there, but she goes middle screen and hits again. 23-12, she's got 10 of the Chinese 12. Holloman getting a bit of advice from Wheeler. I think on how to defend Dai, perhaps not let her <laughs> shoot. And Holloman goes right inside, gets the pass from Miller and lays it in. Dai left it for Zhong, pass to Chen, and Chen's shot is blocked by Miller. Miller keeps it in. It goes back into the backcourt. It will go over the end line. Nice block by Miller. Lee replaces Chen for China. Miller. Hollerman, cross court to Murray. Murray's got the screen, Murray's got the shot, and it's good, Gang setting the screen for her. 27-12. Right now the Chinese don't have an answer for that. U.S. just doing very well setting simple screens on both ends, both sides of the court. Chen. Back to Deng. Deng wheels around and the foul is on Soldan who grabbed on as Deng spun past her. Fourteen, reset of the shot clock for China. That's the first team foul against the U.S. in this quarter. Long. Goes to Die. Miller comes out on Die. Die shoots over Miller and it hits again. China has 14. Die has 12. 27 14. Three minutes gone in the second quarter. Miller 
Brings it up for the U.S. Murray. She hits. 29-14. Becca Murray. A great shooter. Long Yun. Goes right through the middle. He saw her protect the ball, almost like putting your shoulder down and, and just running through. And she lays it in. It's 29 16. Miller. She gets a screen again from Soldan. Soldan doing a great job setting those screens. Miller shooting behind it. 31 16. Dai bumped by Hollerman, who was not going to let her in, into the paint. Deng from the outside. Can't get that to roll, and Miller with the rebound for the U.S. Hollerman, cross half court. Deng knocks the ball away from her. Nice job. Murray. Cross court to Hollerman. Oh, nice pass. Soldan, underhand shot, goes, hits the bottom of the rim, and China with the rebound, and Dai brings it down for China. No one's picked up Dai. Now Hollerman comes out on her, and it's a loose ball and the steal. And it's Gang coming away with it, accelerating, trying to keep the angle, gives it to Murray. Murray's shot was partially deflected. It comes loose and Miller picks it up and gives it back to Murray with 13 on the shot clock. The U.S. can reset offensively. Miller, she'll just chew in that gum. Easy takes the shot and puts it in. She's got the eye today. Desi Miller. 33-16. Under halfway in the second quarter. Miller on long. Finds Die. Die, oh, good pass to Liu, and she lays it in. Pick and roll. Liu picking Holloman, went right past her. Die got her with the entry pass, 33 to 18. Miller. Murray, she misses. Rebound quickly up to Long. Dang on the baseline comes free. Long though takes the shot herself. That misses, but there's the rebound and kick back out to Long. Rebound by Chen. Good pass from Dai to Long and she lays it in. Much better stuff from the Chinese. Starting to penetrate now. Get easy shots. Coach Wheeler not happy on the side. And obviously, they, they need to close off that lane. Miller, from the outside, she hits again. Long. Over to die. Dai moves behind the screen, has to push that when it goes in and out, but Long gets the rebound, and they start again and give it back to Dai again. Dai over to Deng. The crowd's making the noise because they're doing a wave, and that's going to be an offensive foul. You could almost see that one as, as she went hard into the defender to try to block her out. And we've got a timeout on the court called by China with three minutes to play in the first half. They trail the U.S. 35 to 20, but showing signs of more offensive life, getting those cutters going through the middle and getting a couple of easy shots in the last couple of minutes. That assistant coach there is Trooper Johnson. 
Lawrence Trooper Johnson, quite a player himself back in the day. Well, you saw Desi Miller is eight for 10 from the floor. She's got 16 points. Murray, four from eight from the floor, she has nine. And Holloman, three for six from the floor, she has six. Gang with four, he's the only other scorer for the US thus far. And Miller brings the ball up again. Holloman sets the screen for her. And Miller makes it nine of 11. couple of selfies with Scott from the U.S. men's team, Matt Scott. Better ball movement here, but no one's moving now. And the shot misses Miller with the rebound. Lead for Murray, she brings it in with one hand. Holloman trying to set up for her. Murray up top to Soldan over to Miller. Miller misses. Seems to like the shots from in front of the basket more than from the side. And China come down now. Looking to break, but the U.S. players were back. Long spins around. Lou sets a hard pick, and she's going to draw the offensive foul. Same, same again as the last one. Liu comes in and just comes in too hard, knocking the player out. She has to set. See, she can't come in like that. She has to set, just as you would in A-B basketball. When you're, when you're setting a pick, you have to be stationary. You can't be coming into the player that you're picking. Exactly the same thing here in wheelchair. Miller. Well, she misses that one as well. But there's Gang with the steal. But the ball comes loose, picked up by China. And again, knocked away by Murray. Gang can't corral it, and Liu does. And finally, on the third try, China give up the turnover. So a little bit more pressure now in the backcourt by the U.S. Miller. Holloman. There's Miller inside Miller. Well, she's lost. She was hot, but she's cooled down right now. She's missed the last three in a row. Hollerman over to Murray. Gang sets a screen for her. Murray is in and out. And a minute, just over a minute to play. Trying to come down quickly. Watch Liu there. Li cutting in, sets the screen for Liu. Liu in and out at the other end. So the rim's not giving anybody any help right now. Miller, Dye is trying to cut her off, but she gets it up to Holloman. Holloman accelerates so nicely. Murray, gang setting the screen for her. Murray uses both hands and hits the two-handed shot. 39-20, clock ticking away at 30 seconds. Miller knocks that one away. It'll stay with China with 15 on the shot clock and 19 on the game clock. Dang. 10 on the shot clock. Sets. Moves for a little better position. Uses the glass, but it goes in and out, and there's a foul underneath as Miller brought the rebound in. Foul, I think, was on Miller for the push, which would explain how she got the rebound.
Eight seconds now for China. Dai gets the ball. Deng from the top of the key misses. Murray with the rebound. And Hollerman will let that one go as the half comes to an end. And the U.S., well, shooting from the outside, putting some defensive pressure on and creating a few turnovers. And basically, China still cold from the floor. And that's been the story of the first half. The U.S. now leading 39 to 20. Shooting percentage slightly down for the U.S., but still around 35 for China, which is not where they would like to be. Five turnovers for China, six points for the U.S. off those turnovers. No turnovers for the U.S. and a 20 to 15 rebounding advantage. But it's basically been the shooting. The U.S. has had some exceptional shooting from Miller and Murray, and they lead at the half. USA 39, People's Republic of China 20.
Welcome back to Carioca Arena One in the Rio Olympic Park and Rio 2016 Paralympic Games Women's Wheelchair Basketball Preliminary Group B matchup. And at halftime, the United States leads China 39 to 20. Coming on the court, Darlene Hunter. So same team that started the match for the United States. Christina Schwab is on the bench. Schwab, the co-captain and five-time Paralympian, winner of two gold medals with this U.S. team, competed in London in track and field in the Paralympics, now back with basketball. And in the first match against France, had 14 assists, but has not yet played in this match. But she is on the bench She's next to Coach Wheeler during the pregame talk. For China now, Lee. Up at the top, Dai has been their big offensive weapon in the first half. They go inside this time, and there's a foul as Chen shot hit the side of the rim, and the foul is on Murray. Dai had 12 of China's 20 points. And Liu missing the first foul shot. Had two. For the U.S., Desi Miller with 18 and Becca Murray with 11. With the scores, Hollerman had six points, seven rebounds, and four assists. So Liu makes one of two. The foul was actually on Gang, not on. And you saw in the replay that, that made it look pretty obvious that foul should be on Gang, Gang, I should say. And that's Gang on the bottom of your screen. Becca Murray, cross court to Hollerman. Crowd counting down the shot clock for them. Hollerman's shot misses, and the rebound comes to Long. Foul was on Desi Miller, trying to block Dye from coming down the court. It's her third, and the team's second here in the first minute of the third quarter. Deng. Dye coming up to the foul line, shot inside, it was deflected away by Gang and taken by Miller up to Murray. Murray to Miller in the middle, and Miller's shot is good, 41-21. Still keeping the red jerseys out of the paint. You saw right there, Miller cutting off the movement, trying to set the screen. Goes out to the foul line, long, She's covered, Dai, fadeaway shot, doesn't fall, but good rebound and the foul there as Louis got the rebound. And if that's the foul on Miller, that'll be her fourth. The foul though was against Gang and it's her second. Lee makes the first. Misses the second. Rebound by Hunter. Miller bringing it up. Gang sets the pick for her. Now Murray sets a second one. Miller back to Gang at the foul line, over to Hollerman. Hollerman back to Gang, to Miller. Miller drops it to Murray. Murray comes in and uh, puts it in. Nice teamwork, great passing. And of course, helped by that chorus of voices chanting the clock down. 
whirling away on the outside. Pass inside to die. The underhanded layup hit the bottom of the rim and Hollerman puts down the rebound. Up to Miller. Miller cut off. But there's Gang, high pass to Hollerman. Hollerman turns it right into a bucket, 45-22. Gang. And the shot clock expires, which is a shame because the shot by Lou get, went in. Murray inbounds to Miller. In the middle is Hollerman. Shot misses. Rebound. And quickly down to Deng, sorry, to Lee. Lee has an open shot, can't hit Murray with the rebound, gives it to Hollerman. Hollerman bothered by Deng, keeps possession. Miller over to Murray. Murray trying to make some space for herself, high pass to Miller. High pass to Holleran. Hollerman back to Murray. Murray beats the buzzer with the bank shot. Deng trying to take the baseline. Liu. Sets the screen, die with the fadeaway. Hit the front of the rim. Miller rebound to Murray. Murray ball handling, sets, misses. Rebound to Liu. Long, oh, she had space for the shot, but she gets it across to Liu, and she puts it in, 47-24. Looks like Lee might be ready to come in. Miller to Murray. Murray with a little bit more space, comes down the baseline, goes across to Hollerman. You'll see the foul here with the wheel. Shot clock resets to 14. And a couple of substitutions for China. Dai, who hasn't been as effective, is out. Chen comes in. Lee does come in, as we thought, for long. Holloman spinning around. Murray <laughs> hits the rim. Hunter with the rebound. Hunter to Holloman. Cross court to Murray. Ten on the shot clock. Murray's gliding along the baseline and sinks it. Forty nine twenty four. So Lee is number four, very active. Shot short by Louis. Murray with a little grin to Miller. 
turns around, gives it to Holloman, fading back in the lane, and she's fouled as she gets the shot away. Three and a half minutes to play in the third quarter. Holloman will go to the line to shoot two. And the foul on Lee, her first. Holloman makes the second. It's 50 to 24, three and a half to play in the third quarter. Chen trying to set the screen for Liu. And Liu puts it in off the glass, 50 to 26. Shot misses. Rebound to Lee. Rebound to Miller. Miller to Holloman. Cross court to Murray. Most of the U.S. offense, as you can see, is, is quite simple. Murray, it rolls around and goes through, but it's basically Holloman and Murray getting, getting screens on opposite sides of the court and getting those shots. Miller getting hers in the middle as teams go out to defend those two threats. Miller just comes up the middle and, and gets the, the short-ish short jump shots there. Deng with the screen from Liu. Miller with the rebound. They haven't done much in the way of cutting through the middle, of, of opening up passing through the inside. Hollerman now working, beating one defender, turning around and spinning. She sets the screen for Miller, and Miller makes the shot. It's a little variation on the theme there. And that's a good part of, she's got 22, as you see, it's a good part of the, of the wheelchair game is, is the screening and picking. Uh, many of the people call it blocking. Give your shooters the time. And a steal by Murray. She picks it away. Picks it away. Does she have it? Comes down, gets the position, misses the shot. But there is a foul. And Murray. Uh, and now we have our first appearance by Christina Schwab, number 24. She comes in along with Soldan, 33. And Desi Miller gets her first break of the game. And the value to Murray in, in terms of the point scale is that Murray is basically a mid level player at 2.5. And for someone at that level who can score so fluently, it gives them a great advantage in the rest, in the balance of the rest of the team. That was short, but they have to reset chairs. And also Schneider, Natalie Schneider is in number eight for the U.S. Another big, basically. And that's her inside in the, in the paint. Her first shot hits the front of the rim, but Murray gets the rebound, and Murray puts it in off the glass, 57-26. So Miller left the game with 22 points and eight rebounds and four assists. 
Murray has 22 points now, eight rebounds and five assists. Very similar stats for the two of them as the pass goes awry and the turnover goes over to the U.S. with 23 seconds left in the quarter. Schneider waiting for teammates to come down. No rush with 15 seconds left in the quarter. Hollerman with a spin. Back to Schwab. Schwab back to Hollerman. Five seconds. Hollerman trying to make a shot for herself. Gets it off and hits it with just about a second on the clock. The buzzer goes. And Hollerman has increased the U.S. lead to 59-26 over China. A 22-6 quarter, their best quarter yet. And it was built around defense. They're just not giving the Chinese many good shots. And the Chinese aren't really hitting the ones that they do get, which you will see when we take a look at the statistical sheet. Leading scorers for the U.S., 22 points each for Desi Miller and Becca Murray. The score at the end of three quarters, 59 to 26. And if we do take a look at that statistical analysis, China shooting at just over 30%, the U.S. at over 55%. That's one of the big differences there. Points from turnovers all of a sudden accelerated. Nine turnovers for China, none for the U.S. 11 points off those nine turnovers for the U.S. And it's defense in that third quarter that keyed the match. The get score after three, 59-26 to the U.S. So we start the fourth quarter, the U.S. leading China 59-6 in this Group B preliminary game, women's wheelchair basketball at the Rio 2016 Paralympic Games. And China with the first points of the period as Liu gets the basket 59-28. And that pass went awry, but it went off of Dai. They're counting down the shot clock again. Murray, though, Dai got a good hand in there to stop Murray from getting the quick shot off. She misses and dang with the rebound for China. And the basket won't go, but there's... I thought there was a foul. Again, we don't see the referee's signals from where we're sitting. Oh, isn't that sweet? Eight seconds left on the shot clock for China. And there it's going to be a turnover as the pass went through Deng's hands. Oh 
Liu. That one's stolen away. It went through Holloman's hands at the opposite end. Trying to come down. Liu. She puts it in. 59-30. 8.48 to play. Another turn, a very sloppy start to the fourth quarter, particularly from the U.S. Die coming in hard on Holloman and Murray. Shot by Lee it was hard off the glass. And Miller brings it up. Holloman on the break, gets turned away. Cross court to Murray, and Murray can't handle the pass. Another turnover to China. And the U.S. wants a timeout with just under eight minutes to play in the game. 59-30, China has scored four points in this quarter to the U.S. zero. China now, they've outscored the U.S. 4-0 so far in this quarter. And we've got a stoppage for the chair reset. The basket will not count. Good rebound, and Liu, it's 6 nothing China in this period, 59-32. China putting some full court pressure on. This seems to be making part of the difference. Miller to Gang, cross court to Murray, over the halfway line, back to Gang. Gang spinning and looking for another pass. Die is on her. Murray's alone, comes down the middle. Shot goes off the front of the rim, but the rebound was there to Hunter. And Miller with the soft shot. Oh, there was good defense there. Got the shot away with the hand on the ball, basically. And now we have a jump ball situation, and the possession arrow is with the U.S.
And we have a timeout by China. There you see the fight for the loose ball. Hunter getting in there for the for the U.S. 61-32, 6.39 to play. U.S. inbounds with 6.39 to play, 61-32 the lead. China's gotten off to a better start in this quarter by applying pressure, and the U.S. has come a little bit discombobulated. Two timeouts, one by each team early in the quarter. Murray tried to launch a pass to Gang. It was knocked out by Dai. Only three seconds left on the shot clock for the U.S., Oh, and that one tipped away. Shot clock had reset to 14 because China had had brief possession of the ball. It's now 10 seconds left on the clock. U.S. offensively really at all ends here. Murray to Miller. That was a pretty obvious inbounds pass as well. Hollerman. They're not going to get the shot. Well, she throws up a shot, but they weren't going to get a good shot off before the buzzer went. And it's another turnover. Six minutes to play. 61-32. Deng. Oh, Liu was underneath. Murray loses the dribble off her chair. Dai. Lays it up and in, 61-34. Uh, 8-2, China has outscored the U.S. so far in this quarter. Having some trouble bringing it up against the press. Finally, Miller has it. Hollerman was headed down to the basket, but she was well covered. Die is on Miller. The clock already down to eight. Murray inside. She can't get a good shot off. Gets her own rebound. Puts it over to Gang. Gang comes and sets a screen for Murray. Murray looking for Gang again, but the pass was too high and Gang couldn't control it. And another turnover for the U.S. You, well, she misses and Miller pulls down the rebound. Trying to come down quickly, but nothing there. Hollerman comes back for the pass across to Murray. The three of them have been the bulk of the attack for the U.S. throughout this game. Miller. Back to Murray from three. That one's short. And it's another turnover. Four and a half to go. Lee, lots of time, lines it up and hits. 
61-36, 10 to two. China has outscored the U.S. in this quarter. Break the press pretty easily. Gang with Dai on her. Gang to Miller. Miller, the pass goes behind Murray. It's another turnover. And well, some substitutions coming in from the U.S. Maybe to, to liven things up a little bit for them. Poist, Jennifer Poist is in for the U.S. It's helping that China has still not regained their full shooting touch. And Schwab is in as well for the Americans. Three second violation on China. Schwab. They break that one more easily. Schwab goes up court ahead of Hollerman. Hollerman pulls up. She's got the screen for Murray. Murray can't get a good shot away. She comes in, gets closer, and puts the shot up. It goes in and out, but Hollerman grabs the rebound. Didn't have a good angle for the shot. Puts it out to Poist. Hollerman cross court to Murray. And Murray can't get that one to drop. Gang with the rebound, and she banks it in. Only the second basket in the quarter for the U.S. They now lead 63-36. Shot was off, and Murray with the rebound. Schwab. Marie with Hollerman setting the screen and the whistle whistle blows for the reset of Hollerman's chair. Nine on the shot clock. Marie maneuvers, gets a good shot. Again, she's off the front of the rim. Maybe just tired at this point, but a loose ball coming out. Who's gonna win the race for that? It's Hollerman who controls it and gives it to Schwab. Shot clock down to four. Schwab looking for the shot, puts it up and in. So Schwab making a bit of a difference. The five-time Paralympian, won gold in 04 and 08 with the U.S. basketball team, com competed in athletics at London 2012. Liu, she misses, but the rebound to Deng. Deng out to Li. Comes around, Deng again, this time Liu again. And she misses and Hollerman with the rebound. And it may be that that starting lineup for the U.S. just simply has played too long. Both Hollerman and Murray starting to look a little bit tired in this fourth quarter. And whether that's necessary with the lead they had over China, you know, is something you could argue about. Gang gets the shot again. So Gang's had two buckets in the last couple of minutes, and the score for the quarter is 10-8 now to China, 67-36 overall. The lead was not in danger. But you just wonder if that could be a lesson learned in, a, in another tighter game. Murray with the rebound. Course, Schwab barely played, remember? Desi Miller was pretty much the point guard for the most of the match. Schw and Schwab doesn't get the roll, but she gets the foul and will shoot two. This is the first. Oh 
And the second is made, 68-36, 40 seconds now to go. Long. Schwab, Gang, up to Holloman. Thirteen on the shot clock. It's three seconds ahead of the game clock. Schwab, Murray, behind Gang screen. She hits. China with the long pass up court to Dai. Dai, who had a great first half, very quiet in the second half, takes the last shot of the game, and she misses. And that will bring the game to a close. Dai, again, just may have been tired a bit in the second half.